at Pinfield, and I'm joined now by Dave Martin and Andy from Depeche Mode. Great to have you here. Oh, yeah. Good to have you back. It's been uh, five and a half years. My first ever 120 Minutes interview when I was filling in in 93 was with you for Songs of Faith and Devotion. Now, it's good to have you back. And uh, the new album is a compilation called The Singles 86 to 98. Now, um, why did you decide to actually put out a Greatest Hits singles collection at this point? Well, we've always planned to do one because, um, you know, it's just a good historical document. We put the first one out in 85 that, that uh, documented our early years, which was called the Singles 81 to 85. This seemed like a natural you know, continuation, 86 to 98, and it's like it documents the last 12 years. Well, it was a good time to do so. And some people may be confused out there who were familiar with Catching, catching Up with Depeche Mode, which is the American version of that. And some of the songs were a little bit different. There were a couple different things on there. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, over here, it, I mean, hence the title, but we, um, there's actually like a couple of B-sides on there. Because there was an album, People Are People Out Over Here. Right. Right. And uh, it didn't make, they, they were virtually identical. If we'd have put out the singles 81 to 85, we had <laughs> People Are People, they were virtually identical. <laughs> so they, they had to do something different over here. I can't quite remember why, but they did. I think it was because, <laughs> like, uh, let's just talk about this for a second. Um, I think it was about something to do with the fact that, yeah, because People Are People was like our first sort of, like, hit, you know, it yeah, was man. played on the radio and stuff. and. Uh, they, at the time, they all of a sudden then desperately wanted an album or something they put together. Mm. Uh, yeah. anyway. it, wasn't it just because <laughs> the Americans always have to do things differently? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think that, I think that's the truth of the matter. All the way back to the Beatles, it wasn't up until, you know, Sgt. Pepper, all the albums were different, had different motors. Well, it's because we're always, it's a little bit, you know, it's not behind, I don't, but, you know, being based in, like, where we make our music, and we're being based in England. You know, it's like uh, things work a little different over here. You know, it's yeah. not the only place in the world where things work different. Yeah, let's check out your new video. Uh, this is from the album we're talking about. It's a new singles compilation, 86 to 98. It's the new track. Here it is. Only once I'm Matt Pinfield here with Depeche Mode. Now, you've got a companion video coming out to the album, singles 86 to 98. And... Uh, one of the things that was funny, last time you were on uh, Martin in 93, I remember we were showing some of the real early videos, and you were like, no, man, because it's wild. You see the band grow through the years, um, which is cool. I mean, it's great that you've been around long enough to see the changes through the band. Um, this latest video that we saw earlier in the show, Only When I Lose Myself, Brian Griffin directed. You didn't use Anton. You've had a long relationship with Anton Corbin, from photographs to videos. Why did you decide to go different this time around? Was it his availability, or were you looking for something different? No, we still really, you know, respect Anton and like his work. We just felt that uh, um, occasionally we should be open to using other people. Um, you know, most of the videos on this um, video collection are shot by Anton. Right. And there aren't any this time that make me go like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. you remember we were talking about, so we were looking at stuff from the very early 80s. So yeah, I remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and quite a few back then. Yeah. Well, uh, God, you were just, I mean, you were just kids when you just can't get enough video. I mean, you're all sitting around the table in that yeah. one, and it's, uh, it's obvious. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're fort like you said, we're fortunate enough to, over the years, to actually um, learn that, you know, we can take more control over that kind of stuff. And um, it was all so new then as well. Like, video was so new then, and uh, um, you really left um, the whole idea and everything was really... You wouldn't even get into it, you know, it was yeah. left up to whoever was directing you. It was a hit and miss thing, you pick this person, um, yeah. you know, they had a chance to try out their little filmmaking right. on, uh, with these guys, and uh, we were, uh, yeah, we were the puppets for a couple of directors. <laughs> for a new medium, yeah. it was a new medium, it was pre-MTV yeah. yeah. out of it too. Yeah. Anyway, the guys from the Pesh Mode will be hanging out all night, but right now, we're going to check out the New Radicals. Now, this is band is uh, led by a guy named Greg Alexander, who actually like E in the band Eels, had a solo thing out that not many people checked out or heard about before forming their new bands. Now, New Radicals on this track, there's an interesting lyric you can check out where he uh, mentions um, Courtney Love and Marilyn Manson, you're all fakes, run to your mansions, uh, come around here, we'll kick your ass in. There's a real interesting lyric at the end of it that you can check out, uh, you know, whether you agree with that or not, it's an interesting lyric. Uh, it sounds very Todd Rundgren-ish, or utopia, some of that other stuff, but it's cool. It's a good record. From the album, Maybe You've Been Brainwashed too, New Radicals. You get what you give. I'm Matt Pinfield, and when 120 Minutes returns, I'll be talking more with the members of Depeche Mode. We'll also have the latest video from Stabbing Westward, so stay right here. 120 Minutes, I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm still here with the members of Depeche Mode. Now, Alan Wilder left 
um, the band. And, you know, th there's been always mixed press about what was going on, you know, him feeling that he had not enough to do with the band. And, you know, there's some press that said, oh, he didn't do that much. Other, you've heard other things that says that he felt like he didn't get to do enough or on the creative side. What was the real reasoning behind his leaving and what would you... I think he did. I think um, Mark just said that before um, when we were talking that, you know, he uh, he felt like he didn't really get enough credit for within the band for the work that he did for the band. You know, and it's a personal thing. He couldn't kind of work with that anymore. He wasn't acknowledged, uh, um, felt in some way that he wasn't acknowledged within the band for the amount of work that he did. Um, and he did do a lot of work. I mean, especially the last couple of albums before he left. You know, Alan was uh, musically and everything was, you know, contributed greatly to what uh, the sound of Depeche Mode. Was it kind of an irreparable situation? Did you like try to talk him out of it or, or see if you could rework the situation with him? Or? Oh, I, I didn't even, I wasn't around. I was like, <laughs> I was out to lunch, man. He sent me a fax, uh, which, I, you know, landed on the pile of faxes in my place in L.A. And uh, uh, I remember sort of finding it, um, you know, uh, picking it up and seeing that he was, he was going to call a meeting and uh, wanted to talk and was thinking of leaving and all this and decided he was going to leave. And Martin Fletch... Yeah, we did, we did try and talk him out. You know, had, had a meeting with him in London. I wasn't there. Yeah. We tried to talk him out of it, but I think he, he was into doing something just different, basically, you know. And since he's, re he's released another, a, a solo album, he seems quite happy, you know. Sure you guys wish him well. Yeah, I wish him well. You know, to be honest, yeah, I miss him. You know, I miss him a lot on the road as well. You know, and in the studio when we made our last record, I miss his input. Yeah. You know, personally. Yeah. That's true. Well, you never know what the future holds too. The guys from the Mode will be back with me in the second hour of the show. Right now, let's take a look at a video from the band that's supporting you on this tour. It's Stabbing Westward. They played with you last time around as well. Or, well, at least about. I'd say about four years ago, five years ago. They played the last few, yeah, few, the last few months of the uh, U.S. tour. Right, when you were doing the outdoor... Uh, the yeah, that's right, sheds, the, the final screen, yeah. Remember that one. This is uh, from their latest album. It's called Darkest Days. It's their third record. And here it is. Their influences growing up. And uh, you know what? If you get a chance, check out. They have a great B-side cover version of Bowie's Space Oddity, one of the coolest versions of that I've ever heard, actually. Really interesting treatment. And uh, by the way, we mentioned Depeche Mode as being one of their influences, and I'm here with Dave Martin and Andrew from Depeche Mode right now. We're back in this hour. Now, uh, you know, you've been such a big influence for so many years. I, you know, let's face it, you've had one of the longest uh, fan bases and a huge fan base. And at your shows, still, you'll see a lot of people that have followed you all these years, you know, from their mid to late 20s and in, in the 30s. How's it feel to you live when you see a lot of the people returning, some of the, the people that have been following you all this time? Well, we, we've got, it's not just that, we get... Uh, it's whole broad. We've been yeah. at our fan base the last three or four shows, and over here, and it's a real. It goes from from kids all the way through, and it's a it's a great mixture actually. And uh, you do see same some of the same old faces all the time, and it's, it does make you feel good. It's got to. I mean, you know, the people have stuck with you guys for a long time. I mean, it always broadens, obviously, because there's someone new coming up who get turned on to you by, you know, the people that have followed you for for years. Now, uh, how do you feel about this? Sometimes people will say. For them, the Peshmo didn't start till a broken frame after Speak and Spell because really, it's representative of the band. Yeah, you're right. Being generous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's Martin. I'd say they needed to be certified. <laughs> <laughs> so because incarceration yeah. would be good. I mean, you know, which, the first thing I guess you did at that no, point was, with you was see you uh, when when you started writing. And on that album, really, you yeah. start writing, Mark. Yeah, broken Frame is like just a weird collection of songs. <laughs> yeah. You know, like some of them I'd written when I was 16, and you know, some of them I was writing in the studio. So I don't think it was till construction time again that we, uh, you know, sort of found some sort of thread that we've carried on in our music. Also, that time as well, it was like we just kind of, I mean, you know, we really, uh, we, we just kind of like turned around and said, "Hey, Mark, you know." We didn't even say it, you know, Mark was just like Mark was forced into a situation where all of a sudden he had to like write 12 songs or something. Because Vince left pretty much right after that. Right, that, that's right. I think he'd even told us before Speak and Spell was released he was leaving. He did. You know, <laughs> he, did. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he came round and uh, came round, I remember he came round my place and knocked on the door and uh, it was like, you know, uh, I knew what he was going to say, he was like, I want to leave and, um, you know, I want to still write songs for you and all this kind of stuff. And, 
Shall we get into the van story? <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah. We, we knew that he was leaving because he always used to sit on his own at the front of the van. <laughs> 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 Always a good side. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Well, you guys would be in the back hanging out between yeah, you. Yeah, sitting on top of the PI. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. We still have lots more to talk about with the guys in the best mode. But right now, it's time to check out the MDV premiere for the Bare Naked Ladies, Canada's finest, of course, as some of the Canadians will tell you. Take a look from the album Stunt. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. It's Matt Pinfield here hanging out with Depeche Mode. Now, uh, you guys have made like one of the most influential, as we've said before, 80 synth bands, and you've seen how a lot of people hadn't lasted and because you changed and progressed over the years um, how do you feel about the way actually electronic music has changed over the years I mean with all the techno and the drum and bass and samplers in general from back when you really first started working mute records with Daniel Miller and everybody how do you feel about the way it's progressed oh, that's your field, man. this is Martin's serious electronic question Excuse okay. Martin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall I far, furrow my brow before I answer <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, <laughs> I think in some ways we feel quite vindicated because we used to have to justify ourselves so much when we, when we first started out and it's nice that we've sort of like stuck to our guns and the whole world had to change. Exactly. And we, we've sort of like carried it's on doing... very modest of you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really... What we're trying to say is everything involves around us, really. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we make a move and the whole world jumps. Now, let's talk a bit about the, the covers album. Speaking of... Uh, Things are evolving, right? You, you, a lot of bands have been influenced by you, and a lot of bands uh, are on this record. There's really cool bands from all, all different genres of music currently. Obviously, Deftones are on there with a, a great version, Tavern to Hold. Yeah, I like that. You know, Failures, Enjoy the Silence, which they've been doing live, I mean, while they were together for a long time, a great version. And Pumpkins, of course, Never Let Me Down Again. How did you just feel about the tribute album for the masses? I think we're all very flattered. You know, it's great. It's a good album, you know? It's interesting. For me, like after now listening to it, it's like, um, you know, it really, it was like, wow, you know, we can really, um, the different ways that a song, a song can be recorded in. And for me, it taught me a lesson of like, you know, it's, it's important to try and change what you're doing all the time, you know. And we, we have tried to do that as much as the, to the best of our ability over the years. But, you know, really seeing some of these songs taken in a completely different direction to what we would record them in. Um, I, I found like really inspiring. Yeah. Actually. Do you have favorite versions on that album, or bands, or covers that you like the best? Yeah, I like. The, I really like the Failure version. I mean, I've always liked that Smashing Pumpkins version. Never let me down again. Yeah. How about you, Andy? Um, yeah, I like the Master and Servant uh, Cocktail Lounge. Is that by um, Locust? Or yeah. Locust, Locust is really. Yeah. It's quite fun. I mean, all the tracks are good. I think. Um, the guy who put it together you know, deserves a lot of credit because uh, he kept us informed over a couple of years and it sounds really good and fresh, I think. Yeah, yeah it worked out. It's and nice to see Martin's songs being put in, in, in different yeah. you know, in different other you know, types of uh, situations. Absolutely. All right, we're going to check out one of your earlier videos right now as we, as we talked about it. Failure did it on the covers album for the masses, but this is from the 1990 album Violator. It's called Enjoy the Silence from Depeche Mode. It's Andrew from Depeche Mode. Now the tour for singles 86 to 98 basically focuses on that the tracks from that album but there's a couple cool surprises in there too of course you know doing somebody and just can't get enough with you guys you know it's you know it's been a long time it's, yeah. it's great that you're you're doing that you still remember it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know people really getting excited when you do that pulling that out it's fun that's right yeah. i mean that's what it's supposed to be it's you know and uh, i mean that's what it's supposed to be about right you know you're supposed to have a sense of humor with it and i think um you know, it was probably, it's like the least expected song that we would possibly do, and so, to be quite honest, I think that's pretty alternative. Like, that we get up there and actually <laughs> do just can't get enough, that's pretty alternative for the Depeche Mode in the world of Depeche Mode. Right. <laughs> now, yeah. um, you know, uh, with a, there's a drum kit on stage now, you know, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's a pretty new thing as well for you guys, right? How does that feel? That changes the whole lineup, too, and the setup on stage. And the gospel singers as well. How, did you guys come up with the ideas to do that for this tour? It's exciting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just gives a whole new feel to, to some of the old tracks. And I mean, it's, I think Dave gets a lot from seeing the drummer, you know, working behind him and stuff like that. I think it sounds, the old tour sounds very fresh, you know. It's, it's, I think it's, it makes it, as, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it makes it like, um, you know, there's just something about it. It can change from night to night. You know, like, um, you know, one, it, it, it's not like this same re repetition every night and um, some nights it's great yeah. some nights it's just okay 
you know, and sometimes you just kind of like, it's work, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but that's what makes it fun, you know, yes, and, um, and with, the dr with the drummer, the Christian playing drums especially, you know, I, I find it really so much more exciting, I think it makes Martin more exciting as a when he's playing guitar down there, the, the dynamic. That I, that I feel anyway between myself and Martin in terms of like the, what's happening there, energy on stage and the movement and stuff like that is, I don't know, it's, this is, like you said, this is the first time I've ever done anything like that, but... Um, but it really adds, it feels good. Yeah, it? yeah. It's, and you can it's, see the audience responding yeah. a lot as well, you know, and they've got smiles on their faces. It's so much more texture to it. Mm. There's more texture to the, like, the whole sound. Yeah. Especially the older songs, you really feel it more. Yeah. You know, the highs and lows are really different, and um, it's got this extra layer there. And you realize those songs can work in any setting that way, too. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah. On like what we were talking earlier with the compilation album, you can, yeah. you can change it around quite easy. Absolutely. Yeah. The songs have what they need, and that's the depth. I mean, they're there. Stick around, because we have more with the guys from Depeche Mode 100.